Hello everyone, welcome to Peculiar Stories. Gather round, fellow seekers of the unknown, because today's tale is one that'll have you questioning reality and reaching for the stars. Picture this, it's 1979, just days after our storyteller welcomed her precious son into the world. But her postpartum peace is shattered when she finds herself in a bathroom emergency of galactic proportions. As she sits there, stunned by what feels like a scene from a sci-fi flick, something incredible happens. She's whisked away on a journey through the cosmos, surrounded by celestial companions and guided by forces beyond our understanding. But just when she thinks she's seen it all, she's greeted by a blinding light that beckons her into a realm of pure love and joy. And who should she encounter in this heavenly haven? None other than Yeshua himself, radiating wisdom and grace like a cosmic lighthouse in the night. Now, I won't spoil the rest of this extraordinary odyssey, but let's just say our adventurer returns to Earth with a newfound sense of purpose and a message from the other side. So grab your cosmic compass and prepare for a journey that'll leave you breathless and believing in miracles. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon so you never miss out on these incredible stories. Each one offers a glimpse into a world of hope and wonder beyond our own. Without further ado, let's get to the story. On August 7th, 1979, just seven days after my son was born, I lifted myself off of the couch and said to my husband that I didn't feel right as I made my way down the hallway to the bathroom. I felt faint and lightheaded as I sat down on the toilet to urinate. All of a sudden massive amounts of blood clots the size of softballs began pouring into the toilet. I didn't understand that this was clotting. When I looked into the toilet, I honestly thought my insides had fallen out of me and I knew without any doubt that I was going to die. I was so frightened by that knowledge that I immediately closed my eyes and let go. With my eyes closed, I heard a huge rushing noise and felt myself being propelled by a force outside of myself. That was when I opened my eyes and found myself standing upright and traveling through a dark tunnel-like vehicle. I knew I was dead and yet I wasn't concerned about that. I sensed that there was a long line of others in front of and behind me. I couldn't tell you what they looked like other than they seemed to be made of light, but I knew I wasn't alone. When I looked out toward the sky, I could see the stars as we raced by. I was also keenly aware that there was someone standing directly behind me, and a little to my right. I can't be sure, but I felt as though his hand was rested on my shoulder. I felt that this person was there just for me. Suddenly I saw a pinpoint of very white light somewhere in the distance. Then, just when I noticed the light up ahead, I felt the speed we were traveling at begin to pick up, and the pinpoint of light began to get bigger and bigger until I was delivered into it. I seemed to be in a room that had no ceiling and it was filled with the whitest light I have ever seen. It was thick and so I was unable to see the others that were in the room with me, but I could hear them singing what seemed to be one single note of music that vibrated with praise. I could also feel love and joy in this light. This part is hard to describe because it is completely undescribable. There is no love or joy here on earth that I'm aware of that can be compared to the love and joy I felt there, and there aren't words in our earthly languages that can describe it, so I will leave it to your imagination. Yet, at the same time I say, good luck with that, as there isn't an imagination that can dream of love and joy in that manner. It's impossible to describe or imagine. I left that room and found myself outdoors walking along a sidewalk wide enough for four people to walk abreast and still have comfortable space for each of them to walk and interact with each other. There were others around me, but they all seemed intent on talking with each other and didn't take notice of me. When I looked toward the right of where I was standing, I could see majestic mountains with a waterfall, and below the mountains was a beautiful valley with lots of trees and a meadow filled with wildflowers. The colors popped with vividness. If you think the colors on earth are gorgeous, you haven't seen anything yet. Our colors seemed muted in comparison. As I continued to walk along on the sidewalk, I was suddenly aware of a gated garden to the left of the meadow. It was filled with fruit trees and flowering bushes. The gate had an arch over it that was covered in a flowering vine. I left the sidewalk, walked straight to the garden gate, and reached to unlatch it. Up until that moment, 
I hadn't noticed that I still had a physical body until saw my hand reach to unlatch the gate. Before I could unlatch the gate, however, I heard someone summon me back onto the sidewalk. When I looked at him, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was in the presence of Yeshua. He wore a long white robe and sandals. He was very handsome with long dark hair and a short, well-maintained beard. He was also very strong looking. People have asked me, how do you know it was him? I can only tell you that when you are in the presence of the Lord, you have no doubt as to who he is. We walked for a moment when he motioned for me to sit down on a stone bench that was in front of the building that I'd just come out of. In front of us was the garden, and to the right of us was the valley with the meadow, and in the distance I could see the mountains. Over my right shoulder and behind the bench was another building. The sidewalk we'd been walking on lead to that building. The sheer joy of sitting there on the stone bench, in the light, with my Savior, was overwhelming. I felt as though I'd come home. It was here that he told me that I still had work to do, and I couldn't stay there. I needed to go back. I pleaded with him to let me stay. He reminded me of my children and how much they needed me. My daughter was two and a half years old and my son was only seven days old. Still, I begged and pleaded to be allowed to stay. It was then that I heard my name being called, but I heard it like a whisper in my ear. At that moment, I felt myself come back into my body and found my husband screaming my name while holding me in his arms on the bathroom floor. Later, he told me that when he found me, I was as white as a sheet, covered in blood and in the death convulsion. His scream of my name on earth is what I heard as a whisper in my ear, and it brought me back to earth. Never let it be said that God doesn't hear our prayers. I'm living testimony that our voices can and are heard in heaven. I was rushed to the hospital that night and received a shot to stop the hemorrhaging. The next day, a DNC was performed. Apparently the hospital staff where I delivered my son hadn't removed all of the afterbirth and I had gone into toxic shock syndrome. What did I learn from this? I can tell you that my life has never been the same. I have had a hunger and thirst to understand what exactly had happened to me and why me. I don't question that anymore. Instead, I savor the very real memory. And after 38 years of searching the scriptures for the knowledge of the truth, I've come to understand what Yahshua shared with me. He wanted me to come back to earth to remind everyone that heaven does exist and Yeshua is real. He is the Son of God. He also wanted me to tell you that we, all of us, have known each other forever and will continue to know each other in eternity. It's vitally important that we change our attitude and demeanor toward those whom we deem to be strangers and begin treating everyone as though we know them and care about them, as though they are family. When we care about someone, we naturally want the best for them. That is what Yeshua wants us to feel for others, even those we don't know and consider to be strangers. This kind of love leads to saving souls for Yeshua. It leads to eternity together. But what about the people who will abuse, hurt, or even kill you? Well, I can only tell you what I know from my personal relationship with God. He has given me several gifts, but among them, he has given me the gifts of discernment and faith, and He expects me to use them. He has also promised me that not one hair on my head will be harmed by the enemies of God. I say, if God is with you, who can be against you? That does it for today's experience. You all know the drill. Let us know what you thought in the comment section below. Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed.